me and enjoying that presence that has come to meet us in our darkness and sharing the light of Christ with our brothers and sisters in this world. That's the two great commandments. You and others. Not us. Not unto us, O oh Lord. But unto your own name, get the glory. Speak to us today as only you can. We thank you. We give you praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank God. Amen, family. It's a blessing to be back with you this Sunday. Um, and get a chance to share a little bit more of my heartbeat. Um, I, I think what what God has, has been doing in my life is exactly what he's been doing in the church. And even as I hear you guys in a series, a thought process about go, right? Go and be the church. That is the rhythm. As Brother Lewis was talking about the worship night, he was inviting you into a space to say, hey, we busy, we live in life, the throes of life can catch all of us. And listen to this, squeeze out that small, still voice that makes us, listen to this, confident, makes us sure, makes us unbothered by the ups and downs of life. We need to get close to the presence because, listen to this, not in the world or in our resources or in our jobs or in our career are we able to find peace and all of those things, but it's only in him that we have a peace, listen to this, that nothing can shake. You can get a phone call, some news today that can shake your world. But even as your world is shaking, Christ is still settled in the sand. Amen. We need that. And so to get away and get into the presence of God, Jesus, he modeled that for us. There was moments when he just stopped everything and go spend time with the Father. So I echo and encourage you to be at that night, even if you don't know what's going to happen, let something happen to you. <laughs> don't even know what's going to happen. Just say, I'm here, God. Deposit something that I never had in my account before. This morning, as I open up, I want to try to do a couple of things, and I want to stay within my time frame of about 30 minutes, and so I got to move kind of expeditiously. I want to open up with this thought. Part of what I've kind of proposed that the conversation would be about these two days as you talk about mission and go was Listen to this, living to be filled. I need something in me. I need God to put something in me that I don't come to the table with. I come empty, I come bankrupt. I need God, listen to this, to give me God. <laughs> I don't, y'all don't just need peace, right? I need God. If I get him, peace comes with him. Joy comes with him. Meaning to life comes with him. So I need God to give me himself. And you know you gotta be still in your day. You can't be so busy and frantic. This is not something you get on the go. I mean, you need your full attention to detail. You need to get locked in as if this is the one thing that matters right now. And that's part of what getting away in the presence of God does for us. God says to me, as I go forward in this mission, there has to be a sense in your heart that because you've gotten something that is a rare jewel, you now are obligated. You actually owe other people. You know they need this too. You found the thing that, listen to this, there was times when I was um, in the summertime living, growing up in Louisiana for a period of time, um, and you know, my uncle, because my father was in prison, they made it in their mind, they were going to show me how to be a man. So when it was time to go outside and do some work and clean up and do chores, they was making me out there sweating in that, listen to Louisiana heat, not out California heat. <laughs> that as soon as you go outside, you're sweating heat, like that kind of heat. And so they made it a point to teach me some work ethic. And so one of the things that they would make sure that they would do is say, listen to this, no matter how tired you get, how hot it gets, there has to be a commitment to, listen to this, I want to finish what I start. And you know that that's what Jesus is about. He came to do a work, to finish a work. You and I have some work to get done on his behalf. The Bible says we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, listen to this, to do good works. We're not saved by our good works. There's nothing that we bring to the table or something that we do that God looks at and says, because of that, I'm going to bring you in. When we come empty-handed, <laughs> Can't do nothing for God. Listen to this. I am I'm, I'm impotent. I have no power, no ability. I'm, I'm paralyzed. I can't move. I can't see. I can't think. I need God. Listen to this. Do everything for me. And then when God comes and gives me everything now, he says, I didn't give it to you just for you. But you've been created to do something with that wisdom you've been given, that revelation you've been given, that heart, that burden you've been given. That got to make you do something now. You can't sit with that. You got to, you got to, listen to what David said. David said, through my God, I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Now listen to this, David, you can't do that. But that's the feeling that getting near to God does and being 
handed something from God, an assignment, a mission to go give out in this world. That's where you and I find our greatest joys, our greatest reasons for getting up in the morning. After a while, the career will wear out. After a while, the job and all of those things. The joy for those things is going to get mundane and dull. But that joy to get up to say, today could be the day of miracles. And today could be the day somebody's eyes get open to the glory of Christ. God even using little old me. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3, if you wouldn't mind putting that on the screen for us, Ephesians chapter 3. He says, for this reason, I call the prisoner of Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. Do you hear his language? God set me aside. God interrupted my life. God kind of stopped me from where I was headed to kind of do something that would bless me. I needed it desperately. But there was an assignment on that gift that it was given to me for you. If somebody has something that belonged to you and you need it desperately, don't you want them to do something to get that to you? And they know that it's yours. They know it belongs to you. They know that they can't make it without this. You would want them not to be uh, lazy or um, haphazard in their thoughts. You don't want them to forget about you when they have something that you desperately need. Your tomorrow is resting in what they got in there today. So you want them to come today and hand you what can help you in your tomorrow. And so you have to be in that frame of mind that if I was on the other end, I would want somebody to have that attitude. I have been, listen to this, just think of the language though. A prisoner of Christ Jesus. Ooh. Now, I think, now if I was a prisoner of the state of California, that would be bad news to me right now. I, I work currently at a parole center. I've had some guys come in as a case manager who um, they've done 51 years or 30, so I understand. Like, that's, that's a sad story. But he's saying, no, I'm a prisoner. I can't go nowhere. I'm locked in. Like, this thing has come and arrested me, and it won't let me go. And listen to this. I'm glad that it won't let me go. Because I've tried as a prisoner to escape this thing. I've tried to get out of the thing God has locked me into. But I'm so glad, though, I might change my mind and get cooled off. He won't change his mind. He says, my purposes are settled. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So we got a God who wants to see things through to the finish. He says, you've heard that God gave you something that was for you. It's a mystery. That God made known to me by revelation, and I've already written briefly. In reading this thing, you'll be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. What is the mystery? This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles, and really we're just saying outsiders, people who are outside and far away from the covenants of God, something has been done so that they can now become heirs together with Israel, members together in one body, and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. Let's continue. I became a servant of this gospel. I said that last week. The gospel has to arrest us in a way to make us its servant. The good news that awakens us must come into my life in such a way that I don't keep it at arm's length, but I let it fully tackle me. That, that, that's something that um, I learned I had to do. You know, I used to play football, and so, you know, sometimes my kids would want to play football with me, and then I still try to make, like, not let them tackle me, <laughs> make it too hard. But it's like, no, let them take you down. Let the gospel, let it, let it actually fully take over your life. Don't keep it kind of separated, but like the humility of, could get away and just kind of do my own thing and go to church and do the check mark things. But no, God, what do you want from me? Like, what do you, I know Sunday, there's a Bible study during the week, but there's other days. Do you want those two? Like, how should I spend those days? Like, I go to work, I got people who are work around me, I got all kinds of people who are dealing with life. Like, how can I enter into their brokenness? They're broken like me. How can I enter their struggle? Like, to ask God those kind of questions, that make you go to work there. <laughs> That make, that make you go into the lunchroom different because there's something inside of you that has been given to you, not just for you to sit on and take that to the grave, which I got mine and everybody else, you know, y'all. I said it once. But no, you know, it's when, when I first heard the gospel, if he had left it to that and went on up the road with me, I'd have been done. But he kept talking. He kept trying to find new ways and to sit other people and other ways to communicate the same message that my grandmother was telling me when I was a young man. God did not give up. And here I am, a product of people who took to heart 
to keep pointing a young man in the direction where he should go, though he didn't know where he should have went. But God kept working through his own spirit and power and the people who were submitted to his purpose. And this is what Paul is. He says his intent in verse 10 was to show that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God has been made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. God will put somebody through something and make it a challenge. As we even think about the life of Jesus, part of the glory we give him because we see that it was not easy for him to surrender his life for us. We see that wasn't just a walk in the park. That was full-on engagement. Even when the natural body wanted to get out of the deal, he, he, he said, nevertheless, not my will, your will be done. He was all in about the mission of God on our behalf. And we see the result. He says, I pray in verse 16 that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Why do I want him to strengthen you? So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now, I want you to recognize, he says, I want you to know something that's almost unknowable. Did you, you read that? I want you, to, I want you to know something that you can't just find this out. It's not just rare. It's not throwaway knowledge. Like something you got to go through a process. Something has to happen to you. It's a revelation. It's God breaking into your darkness and opening your eyes. Listen to this. Not just to how to get to heaven, but to the beauty and the worth. And the glory of Christ, to the heartbeat of Christ, not just what he benefited us to obtain now, but actually to see him say, I'm coming off the throne. I'm going to unroll all of my glory and come down and allow myself to be weakened in a sense so that I can taste what belongs to you. You know why? Because I desperately want you to taste what belongs to me, says Jesus. I'm working with painstaking effort to bring you near to me because here is where you belong, not way on the outside. There are people right now in this world who are way on the outside. And God says, the same love that reached to grab you and bring you near, let that now extend through your life to bring you close. I want to play for you a few moments of my movie because I think that is what is happening to me. God drew me near, interrupted my life, deposited something in me, and said, now listen, this is not just for you. You old people now, look at this world with all of the hurt. They hurt like you was hurt. Now you got you got the rest of your life. I told you a couple years ago, I believe we're supposed to go in heaven like this. <laughs> <laughs> Exhausting ourselves, not for our own purposes, but for his purpose. Since I know what it's all about now, Paul said to live is Christ and die is gain. He said, I'm not just talking. I want to live that out. And so I pray that for this few moments you'll get a chance to see what God has sent me to do, and I'm going to close the message in my last five minutes. I'm just telling you now where I'm headed in the next season. So we'll go ahead. Thank you. He may be able to come back. O'Neal stumbles, fires near side. This one is batted away at the last minute by Larry Austin. Intended for Corey Murphy. That's why they like Austin. Knock, knock, uh, yeah. my life, it's your boy, oh, it's yeah. Ash, Cold 23 yeah. years,
I know about him, but to know him, to have personally met him, is not even to have you size God up, it's to have God size you up, hallelujah, and come meet you where you at, and so this is why we come right where we at, because brothers and sisters, we just came to remind you, God ain't forgot about us, man, there's still a hope for us right in the midst of challenges and difficulty in everyday life, God is still here, man, and so I came to just bear witness that the king is with us. The king ain't forgot, man. I don't know what you're struggling with or what you challenged by today. I know you got some struggles. If you are human, you got challenges. <laughs> but I'm telling you, we got a God who can fix challenges. A God who will meet us in the midst of challenges. He won't let every challenge get removed before he get to you. He'll come while you feel with challenges and give you peace in the midst of the storm. But it's, it's a relationship that starts that process. You don't get there just by saying the right things. Hallelujah. I'm spending some time with God going through some drama and some valleys with God and coming out on the other side seeing he's faithful. That's what I'm praying for. And so that's why we come with no reputation of our own. We somebody, but we ain't nobody. We just came to lift up the one who is somebody that all men need to know. Hey, hey. Be able to take this gospel man out to those type of streets knowing the type of stuff that happens on those streets man that's been everything for me because what i found out man is my brothers and sisters they've been waiting on us they've been waiting on the church to show up like this speaking in a way that matters to them and so man when god opened the door for me after the fear was gone and i saw that it was open and it was all man that's all this all i want to do now <laughs> So in this moment, I want to take just a quick pause in this movie because God pushed me and talked me into this aspect of the movie, but that was a later on aspect. It was something that happened beforehand that made me stop just looking at Oakland in terms of ministry um, and really start looking around this country. Not that God, God is around the country, but me going around the country for God, I wasn't paying attention to that per se until something happened. And something that happened to me is this sister standing next to me. Um, Emily B came down and um, it was it was crazy to me because I was kind of like originally like seeing the post on the Facebook and it was like she's tapped in a lot of posts a lot of feedback but it was gospel feedback so I was kind of like and I asked my bro Hesh I'm like who is that he told me who she was how he connected and she he told me something about her singing and so we had a song we needed some singing on and so we connected through that song was our entry and I think God did something with just that little rehearsing of a song that turned into something that's gonna last for eternity <laughs> in God's presence. So I just want to introduce my sister Emily B right now. Let her talk about because it was a courageous move. She came to Oakland. Now look, she's standing next to me. Now you see her. We different. We call ourselves peanut butter and avocado. It's different. But she saw us on the street corners of Oakland. Listen to where she's from. Nova Scotia, Canada. Oof. How she get out here? <laughs> but so I'm gonna let her talk about why she came down and what that was like for her to take that courageous step. Well, when someone's devoted to the gospel mm. in every aspect of their life, it's gonna shine, it's gonna show, and that's what I saw. I saw the gospel being spoken and preached in hard areas, areas that I don't even have, you know, where I'm from. I, 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 I like joking about how I'm from a Little House on the Prairie, right? Like, it's, I'm pretty comfy where I am in, uh, in the woods, living down by the river. So, um, when, I, when I see people on the streets, faithfully doing what they're doing every week, not just now and then. That's what made me say, okay, you know what? People don't do this if they have some kind of ulterior motive or some, you know, I knew this was for real. I saw the faithfulness and the message 
on point together. And then th then to, to have that be all over your music as well and not just like, okay, I'm going to make some nice songs right, for Christian right, living. Right. You know, it's, right. <laughs> it's about real yeah. gospel. It's about uh, real pain and the answer to that pain. And so I wanted to be a part of all of that, and I, and the, and just the passion and the drive this guy has. And I'm a I'm a fiery kind of gal, and so I feel like even though we're very different in in some ways, in that way, where the core is there and the the passion uh, that we can feed off of each other is is a good collab. So right. I'm I'm just so blessed and honored to be a part of all of it. Really, I just can't believe God put me here. I'm, wow. Yeah. Now that's big because I think we both are in agreement. I can't believe God has put us here. Mm -hmm. And this is what he did for me when she took that risk to come. Not only was I just taken aback like, all right, she's actually coming. <laughs> we'll see what happened. I don't know her yet, but we'll see. So she comes and um, we just vibe. We just record the songs we had rehearsed and actually had two songs ready. We shot two music videos that week. But more than the things we did, there was a knitting of hearts and spirits that God did to let us see one another as brother and sister yeah. and that willingness to, to just like, all right, let's take this risk for the Lord. Because this is risky. Yeah. This is like, I'm going to take, I'm going to stop all other stuff that's priority in my life and make mm -hmm. this a priority. Yeah. And say, God, I'm going to invest my time in this and let you show me the fruit that you want to give us. And so yeah. that was risky for me. But you know what it did? It gave me the gumption to start looking around this country to say, who else, God? Who else then? Because if, if they feeling like this around the country, we got to link up. For the glory of Christ, like why would I just stay over here in my own huddle when there's a body out there banging it in for the king that want to get active? I want to be a part of it. I'm a football player, man. I get, I fall down, get up in the huddle, get juice, and now the Christ said, "Give me all that." So all the nation is about all that. It was Emily B that helped me say, "We're not just gonna stay in Oakland, but we're gonna be all in around the nation." <laughs> we coming, baby. Watch out.
different up, I don't know. The beginning of that up is down. It's not just up. Who are you? Why you gonna go up for what? Go up to do what? Go up and say what? To who and why? How do you know? Larry, sit down for a minute. It's gonna take me a while, but boy, when I put you up there, they not gonna ever be able to deny what I put in you. So, 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 it may make it. Oh, it would hurt me, oh, boy, because I'm looking at everybody else, and I'm like, I don't want him to die, child. I don't want him to die. I don't want him to die. I don't see your boy. I'm here with my hand, man. I'm working. I'm not doing it for them to see me, but it's like, dang, boy, you don't see all this? But you kept telling me, huh? Life wasn't about that stage. <clears throat> it was about that stage that you would be sent to that nobody really wants to go to, though. Down where there's hurt and pain, where it costs you to serve them. Had a great salary, and God sent me down into the hood, man, to say, take that good gospel I sent you in the colleges to get, and go back to the town, man, where you grew up, man. It's hurt and pain. You know what it's like to grow up without your father, trial and error, trying to figure out life. Man, you know what that's like. Don't you see they hurt? Don't you see they pain, though? No. I've sheltered you, covered you through your pain. I let you taste enough so you know life is real and boy, you can't make it without you. Hey, you on your own, you can't do it. But with me, you can do all things. So I had to take you on a long route, 23 years, man. But you see what I've done in your life right now, how right now in this moment, as you're watching this movie, it's March 21st, 2018, and I know you feel what you're saying to your own self. I know it's people sitting there with you right now, but I'm talking to you. It's the Spirit of God in you talking to you. Now don't you stop. You don't have to change. Just go keep doing what you've been doing. Now you're doing it in front of everybody. And let this world know that the King, he loves his people. I don't care what you're doing, bruh. I don't care. I don't care what you call him in. He can come over to his arm and he can reach you right there, baby. Look to him. I ain't saying figure it out. Stop trying to figure it out. That's our problem. We try to do it with it. We just say, Lord, I'm stuck. Be my savior. Be my Lord. Guide me. The world too big. I can't see my way through it. You open my eyes. You see it how you see it. I might be able to put myself back together and say, hold on, it's not over yet. God is with us, and maybe we could pick up the pieces. I got broken pieces, man. Oh, man. I got hurt, pain, hurt, and I've done to people, hurt that people have done to me. We in the world filled with hurt, but hold on, we still got the same result. Stop looking at the hurt. Look up to where help is. Stop looking at the hurt. Look where right. hurt or help. You don't look at hurt, you're just going to be hurt. But if you look at the help, the help will show up in due time. And so, tonight I'm closing with this thought process. I am preparing to take a nationwide movement of folks who feel what I feel. You've been crying like you. What I just did ain't new to you. You cry with me right now. Why? Because you know, you know what that feel like. Have the king put a call on your life that you know you've been gifted and you're ready to give it to the world. Get at your boy. I don't need a dime, bro. I finally go do it. If you're looking to get in, all in nations. Everybody putting their gift on the table for him. I can come and floss and let it dangle to let the world see us feel with joy because we got a savior, boy. We get to win now and we get to be with him forever, boy. I'm all in. With all in nation. Rock with your boy, man. For the freedom. He paid it all. Let's go get him. Ah. same track to like now go <laughs> and go and I, I really feel like it wants to go to my wife it feels like I'm going pro in the Lord right he killed the football dream of going out into public eye and trying to parade that version of me and he 23 years been making and shaping and building something that would go out and give him glory and I get to enjoy the journey this is amazing for me and I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna close this out this is draft kind of week Right, and so how how beautiful for God 23 years ago to reset the tracks that 
as I enter the draft week, right, this week I got a premiere in Antioch on Wednesday, I got a premiere in Berkeley on Friday, and on Sunday I fly to Alexandria, Louisiana, and then I go over to Jackson, Mississippi, and then I come back to New Orleans, premiere the movie, and then I fly to Nova Scotia, Canada, to be with my sis, Emily B, and premiere the movie out there. Like, this is the Lord's doing. Just like, like, go tell him, son. Go pour all this out. And so that's that aspect. Getting filled with something from God. And then saying, now my job is to die empty. Like, die exhausting myself in the sense of pour this out on this world. Just like you needed it. Your brothers and sisters need it. Have patience. You know you didn't get it overnight. But go and really be with your brothers and sisters. And so what God has done for me the last three years, as I told you, I've been in Oakland, head down, just trying to give myself away. And I look up when I found out that the signal had shot all the way to Nova Scotia, Canada, in the most unlikely candidate in partnership. It was a witness to me that God is God is in this in a major way. Like, and he was sending that type of gift. The sister who was singing, like, she was like, I wasn't singing no more. I'm 35 and kind of had given up on that. I'm raising my daughter. I'm just trying to take care of my family. But God had all that tucked in her. And he used a Facebook Live video to shoot all the way from Oakland, California, to Nova Scotia, Canada, to link us up. And then out of that, I got my eyes open. And now there's four other folks who joined this team and say, we're going to be all in for the king and go spread out this passion, not to go sell concert tickets and pay and buy all the stuff, but all our stuff is free. You can download the music project for free, the video movie is for free. We don't want no barrier between the content we've been given to give. I owe you. <laughs> I owe the people who are in the world thirsty and looking for Christ. And so God has set us up so that we can now travel the country to go down into the hurt and pain, to go on street corners, to say, look at all these gifts God has packaged up that you don't even have to pay for. God is sending these gifts to come into the hurt. You were just sitting here to know what was going to happen today. But here, music and a little bit of food on the street corner, I've seen it work where God is able to do something amazing. And so you guys have been helping me get into a position to get near enough to God and my purpose so that now this is an outcome of just like, all right, here's a package of what we've done. <laughs> and here's a vision for what we're about to go do. This week, we launched this campaign, and I closed with this actual last stop. Um, what God gave me as I finished the movie, he said, now is the season where you have to experience the body coming together to help push this. I'm not going to just make it happen where you get to go run off and do this, and it's disconnected from the body. This has to be a move of the body. You don't, you don't have to rap. <laughs> God said he's going to rap, but you can help send him so he can go rap these bars on those street corners. And to those folks who like rap, you don't even have to love rap. You just need to know there are people who will listen to rap before they listen to the preacher. Like I said last week, all God in his wisdom did is say, I'm going to put a real preacher inside of a rapper. So he can fit the description. He can pass the eyeball test. He got the conversation. He's from where they're from. But it's a real preacher about the gospel. We're not going to bring him to religion. And that's one of the things I'm adamant about, particularly in urban communities, that we get a gospel that comes in and promises all of the bells and whistles of life, but you use God to get something else. No, I want to get you God, brother, because you may never move out of this neighborhood. You may not get a better job. But if you get God with you, you'll overcome everything you might be missing in life, and you'll feel filled the whole time. I to experience that. That part right there changed everything. So, this campaign of the Psalm 27 6 blessing, God told me as I prepared the movie to ask the body to partner with me for one year. $23 a month. That's that 23 of my 23 years of journey. And I was like, okay, God, I will do it. And then two weeks before the movie came out, I was at a stoplight and he said, well, what if somebody said, man, I'm not finna. Wait 12 months to give me a $23 a month. I'm going to give you the whole thing. You're like, Larry, you, ain't did, you haven't even did the math. So I had to get my multiplication game together. That was $276. Immediately at the stoplight, the Lord said, Turn to Psalm 27 6. I have my little NIV Bible. I open it up. The scripture says this Then will my head be lifted above my enemies who surround me. I will enter the sacred tents of the Lord with shouts of joy, and I will sing. And make music unto the Lord. I was like, God, I, I hear you. I, that is so crystal clear. So he says, as you now go from here to movie, what you need to do is go into the city, share what you've been doing, where I called you from, and what you're now about to do, and then allow people the opportunity to step in with you for one year 
and allow that to Psalm 27, 6 blessing to land. I just think about my head getting above the enemy. There's so many things saying, you can't pull this off. Just stay in Oakland, man. You ain't going to get to go all around the country and fan a flame like that. Who do you think you are? But I'm, listen to this. All I am is a push from the body away to be able to do the very thing God has written and inscribed in my heart, the thing he's pressed in me. This is my dying work. And so when I'm turning to the body as I go on this campaign in the cities where we're actually going to do the tour, so what God has done is I'm going to do the tour in the summer. Right now I have a tour to show the movie, share the mission, and watch God raise a thousand people is all we want. That's 10 cities, that's even 100 people in each city that says to me, when they see that and they look at their own street corners and say, man, that gotta happen here this summer. We in, and so I ask that you would pray with us as I go on this um, journey to kind of share the vision and mission and watch God unite the body around this effort to see something a year later, we can look up and say, do you see what the Lord just did? I want to see revival happen where the hurt is. I don't want hurt to open be the last answer. I want God's goodness to be the last answer in the midst of hurt. So, Father, I thank you for this body here that has helped me get into a position to, to discern your call, to, um, to get some wisdom from you on how to move forward in your call. And even as I prepare to take the next steps, Father, they're standing with me. And so thank you that even as they talk about going, they're involved in that aspect, even as they're sending others out into the mission field. And Father, I do pray that you would capture their individual hearts about the particular thing that you've assigned them, their particular angle, their gift, their contribution to the body. I pray that you would sharpen their focus on it. If there are those who let some things become dormant, I pray that you would alert them and you, they would dust those things off and come back to them. Father, those who are still looking for their purpose and trying to find meaning, I pray that you would use everything around them as means of grace to begin to point them um, in the way that you would have them to go. But in all things, Father, we pray that your will would be done and our lives and that Jesus would get the glory. We thank you and we praise you. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank God bless your family.